I get it. You're just not gonna put out more content than me. We do social media. You need to have everyone knowing that you're in real estate. Everything ties together to all correlate, offline branding, online branding, piecing everything together. Are you willing to put yourself out there? I have why not you tattooed on my wrist. Welcome back to another episode of the Why Not You podcast, where we talk about all things entrepreneurship, business, marketing, branding, and mindset, and where we bring on special guests to inspire and to educate. And today we have Mike and AJ from Advanced Development, who treat patients nationwide for peptide therapy. They also have two offices for regenerative <coughs> medicine, located in Rutherford, New Jersey, and Las Vegas. Guys, thank you so much for coming on today. I was when Tony told me you guys wanted to be on the podcast. I got very excited because I was like, "Damn, I love having people on, where I'm gonna learn something that I've never probably had a conversation about in my life." Um, I'm a former athlete, played college football, but like, there's uh, this is a whole different world of medicine, and I'm very excited for you guys to not just teach me, but teach the audience, the people that are gonna watch and listen. So what I like to do is I want to give you guys the floor. Talk about your background, talk about your story, and then from that, I have some, you know, a ton of follow-up questions, but whoever wants to take it away, yeah, take I mean, it away. The, well, let uh, me, uh, you, yeah. could, you could start off, but I just wanted to say thank you guys for having us on. Pre, uh, no Why Not You Media has been great with us so far. We've been working along with Tony, um, you know, his network, well, as well as our network. We've been trying to mesh the two, and mm -hmm. you guys have been great so far, so thank Appreciate you. Appreciate that, man. Yeah, thank you. You guys have been great. I love you guys. Um, we, we originally, so I had, we had, um, I had had some previous shoulder injuries from wrestling, college, uh, high school, lifting weights, and, and probably I was wear and tear from lifting weights over the years. Um, I had been researching stem cells for my shoulders because I, you know, I didn't want to have a labor, re re um, repair. I didn't want to have a rotator cuff mm -hmm. surgery. So I had, um, been researching that just by chance. My neighbor asked me to come play softball. And I hadn't hit the, swung the bat in years. You know, my was working out, lifting weights, mm -hmm. some little cardio, nothing as far as like you know, like you know, golfing once in a while, but nothing baseball, or softball related in a long time. Of course. Uh, rip the line drive up the up the up the uh, middle, tear my bicep where I knew it was torn. It rolled all the way, rolled all the way up. I was gonna have surgery done by a well-known um, surgeon, in New Jersey, and a friend of mine who know who knew a little about stem cells said to me, "Hey, listen, you go go see this doctor, Lordy and Jacobs, uh, next gen orthopedics." She had was using stem cells with her procedure. So on top mm -hmm. of, you know, having the surgery, she would inject you with stem cells before they zip you up, so to speak. Um, I had had heard nightmare stories about the bicep surgery. I've had two friends had it done. Both, you know, were taking Oxycontin opioids for a long mm -hmm. time after the recovery. I was scared of that. I'd never really taken them. And I was, you know, I was, I was nervous about saying, listen, I don't want to get hooked on anything. I don't want to, I want to just try to get out of pain as fast as possible, get back to everyday activities. My pain level was really never there. I mean, the first day I was sore, uh, went home, uh, slept, and then like the next day I really wasn't in pain and I was blown away by it. And then the doctor told me like most of the time it takes a couple months to even be able to bring the bar back to your chest on a bench. 28 days out, I was able to do 225 chest hold back up. I mean, she wow. yelled at me. She said you could put a little weight on. When I started the video, she was like yelling. I didn't tell you to put that much weight on, but yeah. the results were just crazy. Um, at the same time, my father's a surgeon. Uh, I was also a doctor of the military, Desert Storm vet, commander, wow. reached the rank of commander, wow. um, disaster coordinator for the state of New Jersey for 9-11, and he had unfortunately had four strokes in his life, and he was having a problem walking, um, like, you know, he had walked with a, with two canes and was in bad shape, and he was only in he his He actually had the nickname Two Canes for a while. Yeah, Two Canes. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of Two Chains. <laughs> yeah, he had one good one that his friend gave him from Italy um, that had, like, a sword in it, and then one one shitty cane. So I take him to, I take him to this doctor, he gets treated, went to his, uh, I think she injected his SI joint, I want to say, um, one of his hips the first time he went. Oh, okay. There's the initial placebo effect, but certain people do react very fast to stem cells. He walks outside, he took the shitty cane, threw it in the dumpster. I said, what about the good cane? He goes, no, that, this one, even if I could walk perfectly, I'm going to keep this thing. It's from yeah. Italy, it was worth a couple bucks. Yeah. So he keeps it. Um, he had also had, we had found out about a doctor doing uh, procedures where they go into your nose uh, to reach your brain. Okay. to reverse the side effects of strokes, uh, wow. Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, that kind of thing. He went down there, went into the same thing, reversed the effects of a stroke, started being able to write again, started being Holy able to shit. treat patients again. It was We just had such crazy results. Him really and I... Is amazing. It's, that, that's crazy. That's yeah. like, um, uh, what's that guy's name that like healed his back with his brain, with his mind, 
Like, it's, like just the, there's so much that we don't know. Well, your well, mind's the strongest muscle, man. Yeah. If you believe yeah. it, it could happen. Yeah. You know, the people say, I mean, obviously stem cells aren't a placebo effect, but I always tell people like a placebo effect is still the effect. You took something and you thought it worked, so it did work. So taking it made something work. So yeah, the that's effect true. Has yeah, that's true. You know, the mind, the maybe the medication or whatever it is you're taking didn't create it. But your mind created it because you took the medication. So the medication was the source of where that came from. Yeah. You know, so a placebo effect is an effect. And none of this stuff is like mainstream. Like you saying, like getting something to reverse the um, the effects of a stroke. Like, the, like you don't. The, the crazy thing is, though, they've been doing this stuff in Belize, Mexico, and Colombia for a while. Just the way that our country is. Like you could fly yeah. to Mexico and get this procedure done. Belize, they have uh, resorts where you come get treated, you get dinner, or you could drink for the week. Th those type of things. There was yachts going out in South uh, Florida for ten years, where people were paying fifty, sixty grand, taking the international waters, hooking you up to an IV, pumping millions of stem cells through you, um, and and bringing you back. And it just this has just became Holy shit. newer. You know, just newer. It's not new. It's it's new for our country, but not, yeah. it's not new. I mean, new. you look at it. I mean, in America, medical is a business. Right. Of course. And unfortunately, you know, there's there's a business funnel when it comes to procedures as far as, you know, if you're getting your shoulder worked on, obviously you're going to compensate on your other shoulder. Therefore, it might lead to another surgery there. And that's how you keep coming back. Uh, stem cells fix you. You know yeah. what I mean? So uh, an immediate answer to an injury doesn't allow, you know, the the client to come back or the patient to come back. Um, unless you follow up with the correct things, for example, we'll get into in a little bit peptides or even physical therapy, occupational therapy. You could follow up with things like that after stem cells. Um, but you know, like I said, in America, medical is a business, so um, you know they want to keep you in the office. Yeah, yeah. we we had to be like we opened up in a little uh, little office, no bigger than this room, in uh, Strong and Shapely Gym, which is a legendary bodybuilding gym in New Jersey. We quickly um, outgrew the space. I mean, we. The first day we opened, we had 24 patients. My dad was after I convinced him, let's partner up with this. Let's let's go partners. We threw in, mm -hmm. I don't know if it was 15 grand, 20 grand each. It wasn't a large investment. Yeah. Opened up the office, um, bare bones, and like I said, the first day we had 24 patients waiting to to see us. That's insane. Um, within within three or four months, we outgrew the space. Opened up a space at 71 Union Ave in Rutherford. Mm -hmm. um, you know, has three three or four rooms to see patients, a little IV room. Uh, you know, a, an office we, we share in the back, my dad, my brother, and I, and then a nice waiting room. So it was actually a real doctor's office. Um, and obviously, in the meantime, too, we had, you know, we've met patients from all over the world. We had a lot of professional wrestlers, mm -hmm. a lot of UFC fighters, uh, movies, you know, movie stars fly into Teterboro and see us. And uh, one of the patients we had was a pro wrestler by the name of Jenny Santana. Okay. Her dad's Tito Santana, former Intercontinental yes. Tag Team Champion. Yeah, yeah. And um, we were recommended by like a mutual friend. She flew. She flew in to see us twice. Uh, both of her knees, world champion jujitsu, pro wrestler. Uh, she's my age. You know, tra she trains harder than any person I've ever seen in my life. Mm -hmm. And she had had great results with her knees. And she's got the. You know, we were looking to expand either in like somewhere in South Florida. But you know, we hit it off with her. We would talk every day. Um, and we were kind of like blown away with like her network out there being, a, first of all, being a female and then yeah. being in that that community. You yeah. know, she's tough as hell. She trained stuff as well, and then she worked in the school system. I just said, how does this girl have so much time for everything? But she does, and we, we partnered up with there, and we opened up Infinite Wellness. Um, really opened January of this year, but now we have those two offices doing uh, the same thing. The Las Vegas office, obviously, it's we have her and her daughter, so it's more female, like aesthetic-friendly. We're okay. starting to do some of the aesthetic procedures here in New Jersey, but New Jersey's primarily non-opioid pain management, hormone replacement therapy. Uh, obviously, Michael start talking about the peptides yep. shortly. We do cryotherapy. We have a EWST therapy machine, which helps release your natural stem cells. It originally was used for erectile dysfunction mm -hmm. to promote like blood flow. Uh, people who couldn't get an erection, yep. people would do like a pee shot and work in accordance with this, where they would you know use magnetic waves to help promote blood flow. They realized that the same way it worked for like an erection, it would work for an injury. So we use this machine on like for 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 I use it on my SI joint once a week. You literally leave. If you show up in pain, you leave ten minutes later, and you're, and you're not you're not in as much pain. Yeah, I don't want to say it it's one hundred percent. It's, it's pretty immediate, though. I mean, my lower back's pretty messed up, and uh, you know, to the point where, I mean, I'll go to the gym and something simple like bicep curls. I, to adjust my lower back, I got to make sure I'm sitting upright, yeah. squeeze my glutes, make sure everything's tight, just yeah. for bicep curls. Yeah. You know, I'm 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 babying my lower back. Yeah. And uh, so, and you kind of become. I don't know, adapted to it. So you don't even realize you're doing things like that. It's yeah. just because you're always feeling the pain mm -hmm. and doing it. 
But um, the ESWT, I mean, I, 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 again, I didn't realize to do this, but I get up a certain way, like when I'm laying down. Really? And I did the ESWT, which I was laying down for. And I guess I went up, to, went to get up in that way I got up usually and uh, i didn't feel any pain so it was like immediate and you know obviously you got to do multiple sessions but as far as an immediate relief to carry you over until that next session it works pretty amazingly it's kind of crazy because like you know hearing about how what it does for injury and you guys talk about working with athletes and stuff like that i think about now some of these major injuries that like a lot of pros that we know like the ray lewis tearing you know his tricep yeah. you know achilles tendon injuries and it's like wait how, they, because you know as a achilles fan, tendon injury you just brought up some bad memories i'm a jets fan i'm a jet Te yeah well. test of verde were favored to win the super bowl in 99 mm. fucking tears his uh achilles in the first quarter against the patriots i think we finished eight and eight but that was our I mean, up until this year, that was probably our best shot at a Super Bowl team, even with the Rex, Rex Ryan teams and yeah. everything. But, you know, that was a great, great team. Curtis Martin and Wink yeah. and the boys. Yeah. And we were Super Bowl favorite. And like I said, every time I hear Achilles uh, injury, that's the first. Yeah, I, I got I to gotta get it out of my mind. Maybe we win the Super Bowl this year. I'll forget about it. I hope. It. I hope. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers, hopefully. But, you know, I hear I hear what you guys are saying. And then I think about some of these injuries. And it's because, and you know, as a fan, you take a step back and you're like, how are these guys coming back from injuries so quickly? And obviously, you're not the public doesn't know everything because yeah. they have doctors on doctors on doctors and specialists. And then it's like you guys are talking about this. It's like, hmm, you know, I could kind of put two and two together. Like, is this what they're kind of doing well, for athletes to the, get them back? The one thing I will say about like the stem cell, uh, the tissue allograph, I should say that we we use. Um, they there's ten manufacturers in this country that can legal le legally manufacture stem cells. There's a bunch of uh, I don't want to say bullshit because they, they're re, all they're doing is white labeling to resell product. You know they're doing it to make money, which is fine. I get it. Everyone wants to make make money, but the the one thing about this company that we love is they really they didn't want to grow too fast. Like they started off small, they grew little by little by little, and they wanted to make sure the research was there. The people were getting the results, and we actually had someone, a doctor I know, uh, brought all ten manufacturers to Sloan Kettering and tested all ten. Products they had gotten, I don't know, they purchased them. I know uh, Vitacell Biologics sent them samples because they were so confident. Here, test our product. We'll send you the samples. The the out of the ten, the average viability count was sixty eight percent, which isn't that great. Uh, Vitacell Biologics tested between ninety two and a half and a hundred percent. The only one that tested at ninety two and a half was defrosted four hours earlier. So still four hours after was still that that potent we will not inject just anything into when he says unfrozen they when when we it's ordered, frost, yeah yeah so like if you came in for stem cells on a wednesday they're getting shipped tuesday overnight on ice to us to be there wednesday gotcha. and you, you you defrost them right before you and administer we also ah. have a tank that's 80 below celsius so, so you have to if that to storm in your office they have to be 80 below celsius if the the freezer or the uh tank you have is 80 below celsius you're they're starting to defrost Anyway, so that we make sure that obviously our tanks always full of gas. Um, if for whatever reason, sometimes obviously you know a gas company is hard to refill. We get overnight; it comes on dry ice. You know, we do the, the procedures. Well, out. To yeah. his point, after being defrosted for four hours, where they should have been administered already, they still held up their value and and uh, you know at least yeah. And I mean, I, and to be honest too, just from like a salesman's perspective and uh, being owner with my dad of the company, the the one thing I do love too is their exosomes. They own a patent on it. So they 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 lawfulize them. Mm -hmm. They mean is they're, they're freeze dried. So they don't have to the exosomes, which I'll get into what they are. They don't have to be stored eighty below Celsius. You can store them at room temperature. You reconstitute them with one to two cc's of saline, depending on okay. if you're going to do a joint injection, uh, an IV push. You know, like we had just said, going in the nose. You don't have to store those at eighty below Celsius. And okay. all an exosome is, is derivative of a stem cell. There's one thousand exosomes in every stem cell. Okay. Exosomes are more geared at uh, attacking inflammation and everything. And for instance. I said my dad again. He's a, he's like one of those test dummies from those old stupid commercials from the eighties <laughs> yeah. where he wears seatbelts and crashing the wall. Well, not to make light of it, but he he had gotten into a car crash last July. It's right around my birthday. I was on board the twenty fifth, so I had to be like maybe the thirteenth or fourteenth. Was in a car crash. The car flipped a couple times. He had to be pulled out of the sunroof. Oh fuck. He was, he was so you know he had a hangman's fracture, broke his neck. First thing he said was. Um, I know he had to treat a, a, a pro wrestler's daughter who we're, we're friends with. Um, and he was saying, I got to make sure I'm there tomorrow to do a procedure. They're like, sir, you have a broken neck. Took him right to the hospital, hangman's fracture. It's going to be a six to eight month recovery. Now, this is they his dad, who's, he's, who's 70 years he, old. He was turning 70 last September. And also is the same person that had the four strokes. Yeah. yeah. So he's 70, had four strokes, and broke his neck. The recovery time should not be that quick. 
You know what I mean? One, now. one month later, he was seeing patients in the office. The only he did never never got a direct injection into his neck, never got an injection into his spine. The only thing that we did was two IV pushes, um, consisting of five Vitacell uh, tissue allograft product and one exosome in each in each IV push. Um, it's not cheap, but it's not too expensive either. And those two IV pushes, we did one. I want to say four days after the crash, four to five days after the crash. When he was home, another one two weeks later. One month later, he was seeing patients in our office. And not only do we see oh, patients uh, in our let's office. Let's cut to the chase. Yeah. Uh, a month later, he was in the office seeing patients. Two weeks later, he was at the bar with us across the street from the office, taking off his neck brace so he could kick back shots and then putting it back on. That's also the yeah. also Reason. went to uh, the, hib the, the hibachi. hibachi when they throw the the Japanese he's guy throws his zucchini. He tried to catch it. I said, "Do you have a death wish or something?" The guy he's trying to catch it with the. Uh, with the his neck, and, and two weeks before he was in a, you know in the car crash. Yeah. That that it's it's just like sitting here and like hearing that like that is fucking mind blowing because this is people not, don't believe the, the problem. There it's was hard because that it's saw hard it. to believe. There's so many people in our office that saw it, so it's like they're like, wow, how the, and we're like, dude, this is what we gave him. We didn't. We're not Superman. We're not like you know. It, this is what he took, and this is how he got better. But you, but you have to think about it. Like, you know, being from the outside looking in, and you hear stories like this, it's very hard to believe. It's just like, ah, like, this is this is full of it. But then it's like, there, I, I always say, like, if, if, if medicine is so advanced, like, my, my uncle is, is a scientist. He went to Harvard Med, and he studied cancer. And now like, we know you, where you get your brains from. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I, I've, you know, had conversations with him about cancer and, you know, the med and, you know, medicine being a business. Yeah. And I'm like, th like, we have some of the most intelligent motherfucking yeah. people yeah. on the planet living and working at these universities. You're going to sit here and tell me there's not shit that can like well, heal look, people. Look at, the, look at like NBA and some of these other players. Like some of these guys, Kobe Bryant, God rest his soul. Yeah. His people around him, he, he's a smart guy. He was a smart guy. Yeah. And the guys around him were smart. Yeah. They were sending him overseas to, to get to get yeah, to get to get to get uh stem cell treatments done because they know it was gonna get him back faster. Yeah. You know, there's guys, all these UFC fighters and pro wrestlers going down to Colombia. They weren't going to Colombia to go hang out with women and party. They were no. going down there to get treatment procedure. I mean, maybe they did party too. That's yeah. you know, their business, but yeah. the, the they were getting treatments done sure and they did. were they were, you know. It works. There's a reason why they were doing it's, that. It's like, you know, and... It, they it's, were treating strokes in Mexico with this over 10 years ago. But Think that's fucking that. nuts because, you know, it sucks. It's like you brought it up. It's just like they want to keep people in the office. Well, well, but then you hear this stuff and it's like, you know what? It, it's like the public. And I know that's what yeah. you guys are starting to promote and really push because the public, people need to know about this shit. Well, yeah, it needs to come down from the elite and trickle down to our communities so everybody can live healthy. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's... um. I mean, like you said, people were traveling out of the country in order to get these procedures done and in order to, uh, you know, have their injury or what have you be worked on. And the reason was, how does Mexico medical compete with the United States? Mm. It doesn't. You know how they do it? Yeah. They offer something that we don't, and it's stem cells. And they charge an arm and a leg because you can't get them here. No. So now they have a uh, segue into making money into medical down there. So it's um, like you said with the cancer. I mean, they could cure cancer, but how many people are in the hospital in those beds, dude? Don't even filled with cancer <sighs> that are getting chemo that they're paying for. That are don't, getting this, I, that are I getting that. Go on a I mean, they're, you're talking about billions and billions of dollars. Well, being we had made. a patient. We had a patient with, with. Um, oh, to listen to this. this. So okay. it's a, um, it's a, you know, due to hip hop, I just can't give you the name and everything. It was a mutual, yeah, mutual yeah. Uh, friend in my town. Uh, his his brother got sent home pretty much to hospice to die, mm -hmm. and his wife was six months pregnant. What type of cancer? He yeah. had a very rare uh, stomach and intestine cancer. Okay. It was like I think there was only there was less than a hundred thousand cases of it ever, uh, ever. I don't know the name off the top of my head. I, I could find out and let you know. You know yeah. before you stomach and intestine. Yeah, yeah. So you got to eat and you got to get food out of he, it. Yeah, both of those things are fucked up. Yeah, he went to a to a hospital out and it's it was right outside of Cleveland. I'm I'm drawing a blank on the name. It's St. Xavier, St. Edwards. Someplace they've done in in the history fourteen full stomach and intestine replacement surgeries. He wanted to have it done. They said, "Sir, no offense, you're 108 pounds. You'll be and this guy was about 180 normally. You'll be dead 10 minutes into the procedure. It's not even. It's not even. Don't even put yourself to the torture before." He came to see us with no, you know, hey, whatever happens he happens. On He's on hospice. They, they walked out. They said we're not doing this. They left hospice mm -hmm. and instead of waiting there to die, they came to the office to look for a solution. We gave him a sub-Q injection, told him when he left the office, your goal is to just fight till next week. Don't listen to anybody. Don't listen to Sloan Kettering. Don't listen to, to any hospital. Whatever hospital you went to, don't listen to anything they say. 
fight your balls off till next week. Next week he comes, he's 115 pounds. Got a little bit of his appetite back. Uh, on top of the IV fluids Don't and tell everything. This guy, he's in he, full remission. He was right eating everything. Well, we'll get to he, yeah. So two weeks later, 122 pounds. Mike's working with him on his nutrition. There's also a doctor in the city that we work with who does these tea and herbal herbal remedies that'll assist with you know with with this with the product. Now, not to interrupt you, but so he had stomach and intestinal cancer. He can't eat food. So yeah. the way he was getting his food, it wasn't through a feeding tube or anything. It was literally an injection to make his body think he was getting calories. His fluids were through an injection. His wife was giving him this stuff. So he was eating zero food. He couldn't. His, his stomach yeah. had cancer, his, his he, intestines. So he couldn't actually put things in his body. I, I want to say the second week, uh, there's a great pizza place by us. Um, John Special owns it. Um, and he makes a great Brooklyn pie. And he saw us all eating the pizza in the office. Whenever Wednesdays are our crazy day, we see 40, 50 patients. So it's like we'll order food, and like if you have a chance to run in there and eat, eat something, the, you do. Yeah. And we we made sure we we gave him enough time where it was just him in the office for yeah. a half hour. So we're that I mean, he says, "Can I try one of those slices of pizza?" His wife was like, almost jumped out of the chair. She's like, "You're hungry?" He goes, "I want to try it." Ate the whole slice, corner slice of and it went, and it the Brooklyn Square. Yeah, he didn't get nauseous or anything. Wow. The next week. He's, we were ordering sushi in the office. He said, I'm not going to order raw fish, but I, I've just been craving sushi. sushi he goes, can you get me like a cucumber, avocado, vegetable roll? Oh, yeah. He just wanted to eat like the seaweed, likes rice, likes yeah. the ginger, all that. Yep. Ate it. No It was problems. great. The following week, another thing. Who doesn't crave fast food once in a while? Yeah, he loves course. McDonald's. He loved McDonald's. He used to I take do. his, I you love know, McDonald's. so he, he wanted a Big Mac. So his wife let him get a Big Mac on the way And he home. ate it, no problem. The six at McDonald's, yeah, I'm a Nuggets guy. Yeah. yeah. I, Mike, Mike could eat 20 Nuggets. He doesn't put on any weight. I look <laughs> at it and I gain weight. But uh, the fifth or sixth week, he actually drove home from the office. And he didn't live 10 minutes away. He lived an hour away. Uh, hour away. Now, yeah. this guy was on hospice. Yeah. A few weeks later, they said, you know, wait it out. You're going to die in a few days. So now, Damn. this is a year and a half ago. His, his kid is now a year and three months old. So he's not only saw the birth of his kid, he's seen the first year of his kid. And now he went back to that hospital that told him no. And now he's on the list for the full stomach and intestine How replacement much does he surgery. Now? Uh, last I checked, he's about in the 150s. Like he's from, not back to, yeah, but he you lost go from all his, 108 yeah. to 150. Yeah, one, yeah. That's 42 pounds. And his natural weight, I think they said, was about um, 180. Somebody that they were going to have be dead for about a year now. And, and, how, and how's he feeling? He's obviously he's not he hasn't made a full recovery, but he's feeling well enough. Listen, he takes his kid, he takes his, uh, he gets to see his kid, plays with his kid every day. Okay, he could still drive. Does he still you know. come and see you guys? He comes, so he's on the list. He has, he has, he came for a straight year. Now he's been in the process going back and forth to Ohio to to get you know. There's a lot of stuff that goes with it, but he's going to start you know after after their replacement surgery. He wants to start coming back for other st st other other things we do as well. But just the fact that he came for. That amount of time, and like I said, the, 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 the Ohio hospital, they didn't even know it was the same person when he came back. He but said, "Hey, remember fucking, me?" It, it's like you hear that story, and that's just like it's fucking crazy. This is, and this and is then, the fucked up. This is the fucked up part. Thirty-two people are on the board, right? Yeah. One out of the thirty-two people voted no, and the reason why was they said they were afraid of contamination issues from the stem cells. And this guy says, "Hey, fuckface, I'm still alive a year plus later. You told me I, you know, you told me I couldn't come see. I'm alive a year plus later. I'll take anything." To survive, so yeah. the one person. I mean, obviously, he's still on the list. That person didn't do anything other than just, you know, yeah, didn't do anything to 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 to, to make the other thirty-one other people vote otherwise. But he's yeah. on the list now because of because of this. And there's still people like after seeing this guy's recovery, just because they don't believe in in natural regenerative medicines, yeah. that, that would vote no to something like that. And, and it's sad because it's like, look, I I, I don't want to turn it into like. Like I, I can fucking go on full blown rants because like so my my mother died from cancer my nana my, yeah. Yeah, my nana did and my grandmother did all right my grandma was eighty nine my nana was seventy five but my mom was fifty seven she just died in January oh from, my God. from brain so cancer so you know so she had glioblastoma and you know the survival rate for that is like three percent to you know to get past three years and the average lifespan is about fifteen to eighteen months my mom died in exactly a year time. And it's like, I'm not going to get into like conspiracy theory stuff, but like I used to have conversations with my uncle and like I used to kind of bug out on him because I'm like, you know what, you can't, I go, look, you did all the cancer research and the shit in the world, but I go, please do not look me in the face and tell me that they, there's not some smart motherfucker out here that figured out how to fucking help this Dude, shit. look at, look at, look Because at. like, I, like I would have done anything, like, yeah. you know, like it's sometimes, you know, in hindsight 2020, I wish, you know, we knew you guys because I would have fucking drove my mom, my, my mom out there and be like, you know what, Ma, just fucking take anything yeah. because you don't know what could have worked because it's like they're like well that that's where that's they what get I was off. gonna say that's you yeah. you, don't, you do you do anything yeah like, that's where they get, off, the, they get off not doing stem cells 
because you'll do anything. So they set up all these other things for you to do. Yeah. You know, because you'll go do all that. But cancer's so it's over a hundred billion dollar business. Like every single hospital in the fucking country now, White Plains just five years ago built a cancer center. Like, p- like if people wake up, like there's a reason for this yeah. shit. Like they're not just doing it because well, it's only, to help. Not it's only to make that, money. Let's just go back to yeah. what we were saying before, yeah. the power of the mind, right? Yeah. And like how much that helps. Imagine if people who have cancer knew there was a hope. How much more of the brain would well, put in effort to stay alive? Like, think about this guy we're talking about. They put him on hospice and said, you're going to die in a week. Yeah. I'll tell you what. Maybe the stem cells and all that stuff got him there where it was. But he left hospice and said no because of his mind. Yeah. Like, he had hope. He believed that he could do it. Uh, granted, obviously, we gave him the correct treatments to help him yeah. along that. But at the he's same still time, the one who fought, he's still the one who fought every he, week. He yeah. had to fight the battle. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And think about how many more people would fight the battle. If they knew that there was something that can give them that hope that, yep. you know, I mean, other than that, I mean, man, when you got cancer and you, even though you're doing all the treatments to try to stay alive, you're you're just you're trying to not die is really what you're doing. Yeah. You're not trying to stay alive. You're trying to not die. And the big thing now, though, that everyone's talking about and I feel like it's becoming more mainstream and it's a part of what you guys do as well is that like b- the preventive the preventive measures that you could take to reduce the chance of getting these yeah. diseases with the, the water, the, the foods, the, all the supplementation, all these different things. And like that, like what you guys preach about putting good things in to get the results you want is so important. Well, I, yeah, I look at it this way. I mean, so there's a saying in medical that you, you, you treat the symptom, not the illness, right? So mm-hmm. for example, if you have a, a bellyache, to make a very general example, yeah. if you have a bellyache and you come in and we make your belly feel better, you're going to come back every time your belly hurts. You got to make fun of me. You just but had a bellyache last night from eating too many <laughs> liquor, too <much> licorice. <laughs> That's definitely what it's from. Yeah. So. Um, but like, if you come in and your belly hurts, and then we make it not hurt, then every time your belly hurts, you're going to come back to us. But if we make the source of the bellyache go away, you're not coming back. But right? that's how it should be. Well, the right, right word that's should. how it should be. So here's another thing. So <coughs> obviously for some of our, aside from the stem cells, also in the office, we do hormone balancing. We do IV vitamin treatments, yep. vitamin therapies, uh, pain management. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if you if you take a look at insurances, right, because we take insurance for some of this stuff. Yeah. It's called health insurance. Yes. But people don't even know that they have health insurance. They think they have sick insurance. They think that they have good insurance because when they get sick, their meds are covered. When really, in reality, their insurance covers preventative care. Really? So that's health, like like coming in and getting occupational therapy regularly. If you're somebody who works out so that you don't get injured, you can do that. You know what I mean? See, I, I, ba- don't, I didn't know bal- Balancing out and optimizing all your vitamins and your hormones, you can get that done. So the thing is, is it's it's really sick insurance, not health insurance. Health insurance would be to, most, of, most of the time your insurance is through your, your place of business. Yeah. They're supposed to keep you healthy to not get you sick so you can continue to work. Mm-hmm. They're not supposed to give you insurance for when you're sick. They pay for your meds to stay home. See, that's a, so that's it's not a sick insurance. Mindset it's health insurance. So that it really has to be a mind shift. And once you get that benefits package, you know, really look into what you could do right now so you don't get sick later. Don't wait till you get sick and then, you know, just have CVS get your, your meds covered. So, I mean, that's like, like, to touch what Mike said, like hormone replacement therapy. Like, you know, everyone, you hear TRT, testosterone. Everyone thinks, yeah, okay, yeah, it's great. Everyone wants to get big, big and jacked. But you know how bad having low testosterone is for you? You know, I mean, listen, I'm not going to say I'm an angel. I took a lot of stuff years ago I shouldn't have taken. My testosterone about seven, eight years ago was down to 74 when yeah, I stopped that's... taking everything. So, I mean, I'm on testosterone the rest of my life. I feel a lot, hell of a lot better having a little high than having it having it at, se- at, at 74 and obviously the health conditions that go with having low t are are, are um, terrible brutal. yeah i mean so, listen it gets a taboo look because of obviously you know in sports and in the in the fitness community um you know people utilize it for other reasons but that's obviously that's abuse as opposed to using it you know yeah. what i mean uh the overall well-being the overall motivation factor of being a man the overall energy levels uh, being able to be intimate with your wife, keep your relationship. Yeah, what guy doesn't want to feel like a fucking man? No, right? you know? not, like, not, yeah. And, uh, you know, it's just, um, here, I mean, put it this way. Since the beginning of time, it is a scientific fact that the t- testosterone is the male sex hormone that makes you what you are. Yeah. And it's also a fucking fact that at a certain age, it starts to decrease and diminish. And you start to not become who you are yep. because the hormone I mean, that makes you there in t- in goes away. Today's day and age might have something to do with our president, but well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. a rabbit hole. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the thing is, they'll give a twelve-year-old girl a 
birth control, which is a hormone medica medication, yeah. so that she can have sex at 12 years old and also prevent something very natural like getting pregnant. Mm -hmm. When really something very natural like your testosterone levels diminishing as a man, you gotta go through leaps Hoops, and bounds to try yeah. to get that optimized. It makes no sense. It doesn't. It makes you you no sense. have to go find the biggest guy at your gym and ask him to get yeah. stuff where or who know knows people you. like you or, or, yeah, or, go to, or go to the doctor's office and be honest and say listen i did this back day or just a lot of people who never did anything if you have you know there's guys we had a guy in our office the other day he's 400 and i forgot how much he weighed and he used to be an athlete kind of car accident was yeah was gained a ton of weight during it his testosterone was like 65 this guy's gonna work out every day he's barely gonna see now, those of you the that don't know numbers I mean, so your testosterone level should be i mean it, obviously it varies for age but you can go anywhere from Maybe, you know, a healthy one would be like 450 to 1100. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you're talking about double digits, 60 something. Yeah. I mean, that's there's some women with that level of testosterone. Yeah. yeah. We, that's you know, that's, that's a, so like to get this guy, he's already lost 30 pounds. Yeah. He's walking again. He's starting to go to the gym again. Just because of a boost. Yeah. And like I said, it's not, he wanted to do it, but it's just like, you're going to do something. It's going to be that much harder with that testosterone of 65 yeah. or 60, whatever also, it was. You I've never gotten mine tested. Yeah. I'm always curious. Yeah, I mean, also what you got to look at. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Come yeah. on. Um, you got to look at, you know, it's a doctor's office. It's not a gym locker room. Yeah. So you're also, you're you're coming there to get the hormonal support for whatever reasons that, uh, you know, you're lacking in or, you know, whatever your lifestyle entails. You're going to get the hormonal support to be able to do those things or you know live the way that you want to live it's not going to be an exceptional amount that's going to give you you know performance enhancing effects may you be able to perform better yes but at a level of now having balanced hormones as opposed to you know super physiological levels yeah uh, that makes total sense you know i i think that these are conversations that need to be had and things that have to become mainstream and like look like there are people talking about this stuff on TikTok, on Instagram, yeah. on these different social media platforms that it's be starting to become heard because people are like, yo, there's something wrong. Like I, my 18 year old cousin is a power lifter. He went to the doctor. His testosterone was so low at 18. Well, and like it was like and, and he didn't touch anything, yeah. but it's from the foods, the, all these different things and issues that are going yeah, I'll on. I'll tell you now, I, I see it firsthand at the office, uh, you know, getting to see people's blood work. Like I said, obviously, as you get older, your testosterone's on a natural decline. Yes. People that are in their mid 40s, maybe even reaching 50, their testosterone has already lowered, and it's at a level to which somebody in their mid 20s these days are, is at. Yeah, that's currently. my point. It's scary. You know, so that those people that are in their mid 20s that are rocking out at whatever level they're at, that's going down when they get older. Yeah, and it's going to turn into an yeah. issue when they get older. But yeah. now I kind of want to transition, you know. It, like you guys want to talk about peptides and things of that sort just so the audience knows like just define what that is you know because yeah, I, so, my, many um, people don't know yeah so you're right many people don't know and a lot of information that's out there is misinformation so peptides just became legal through medical use okay uh for, i would say for the past like six years or so uh they've been widely used on the black market mm. for for more so fitness purposes peptides yep. go way beyond fitness but, you know, obviously everybody likes to work out and look good. So there are peptides that aid in that. And you were able to go online, just click whatever bottle of whatever you wanted. Uh, it would say on it, like, for research purposes only. Or yeah. Not for human consumption or something like that. And, uh, you know, you just pick and choose and it shows up at your house. There's no directions, no dosages, <laughs> nothing. You just kind of <laughs> order it. Yeah, yeah, good yeah luck. figure it out. And the thing is, a lot of the information online is you know people go on there and they read forums from people's experience with peptides before they in dabble and in them yeah, themselves yeah. and all that built up online is or on the internet or whatever they call it these days yeah. is um you know information based off of pretty much black market products uh so it, you know today if you want to research them i would recommend you know going on to a, a clinical website or a, a medical office that's utilizing peptides obviously you would get better information and a more wide variety of peptides that you could use as opposed to, you know, some site that who knows what they're selling you, but who peptides are relatively new when it comes to the legality of them, mm -hmm. when it comes to, uh, you know, getting them through medical use and things like that, it's expanded the uses for them. So like I was saying, it kind of originated with the fitness world and them being sold on the black market and, you know, things for muscle gain and fat loss and, you know all that type of stuff uh, more aesthetic reasons or performance reasons but now that it's opened up into medical 
and it's legal and you could actually you know go to a place like advanced development and you know get a consultation on what it is you're looking for and we can really pinpoint the need that you have and distinguish what peptide you need it's brought in the horizons um reason being is along with stem cells peptides have been around forever they're already inside your body yeah so what a peptide is it's a it's a chain of amino acids so it's a um, it's a signal mm -hmm. right different letters and number combinations and uh gets fired to a certain body function and then signals that body function to do the function that that body function yeah. does um so there's over 700 peptides okay so whatever function there is in the human body there's going to be a signal sent to it for it to operate so we're going beyond the aesthetic things meaning stuff that helps you gain muscle lose fat um you know all that stuff that goes along with with aesthetics and, and yep. the fitness world uh you could get into things like cognitive peptides help you retain information better things that help you uh create you know access memories that you haven't had in a while uh sexual function um also you can go along the lines of uh regenerating hair growth mm -hmm. you know they could you could send the signal that does the body function to grow your hair to make your skin tan wow you could literally you could literally take peptides to make your skin tan it's, so it's this is stuff that like the the common person doesn't understand or no know. it doesn't and you know it sounds funny like you guys would blow minds if you made content about this on a daily basis people would be like what the fuck well, are these and guys the, th the thing too like mike's identity is like I've, I've i take i've been taking a couple of them he's taking He's taking some of them, so like we're, we know from we're not just saying to you do practice a what you preach. Yeah, it, we you know we've gotten both gotten results from it. That's why yeah. we're we're You're preaching. Advocating it, you know, it. same you know same thing with the stem cells, so, or you know, tissue holograph, the exosomes, everything we've used. You know, we've yeah. had great results. That's why we do it. You know, it's yeah. not just say let's open this place up we know nothing about and and, <laughs> and do it. We know <laughs> we know that we know it works right. and we yeah. know that you know. And that, aside from our own personal use, I mean, we've touched on our clientele a bit. Yeah. Uh, you know, we have professional athletes, mm -hmm. combat athletes, meaning UFC, pro boxers, WWE wrestlers. We have uh, people that have been in movies, all things like that. And, uh, you know, they're not living stagnant lifestyles. So no. when we give them uh, treatments with peptides, they're putting them to the test. We're seeing if they work. You know, they're not just sitting around waiting <laughs> for something to do magic. Yeah. yeah. So we have feedback. We have examples. Of course. Of and, things that work. And, that's and, and we're not just saying it because we both used to wrestle, but... I mean, I don't think there's anybody who takes a beat more than wrestlers and MMA athletes. Well, football players too, but yeah. I mean, wrestlers, MMA athletes, they're, they're training three times a day. You know, yeah. like, like a lot of our friends, we just talked to one of our good friends on the way here, Jordan Oliver, 2020 Olympic wrestler, a uh, couple time NCAA champ at Oklahoma State. Um, he's He made the mix to go over to, to Bellator. He, we talked to him, this, oh, I just came from this training session. I got to have lunch. Got to go to my second training session. Go tonight. Like, yeah, the day doesn't stop. Part of we talked about before, Jenny out in las vegas she's she's you know still working in the school system now hopefully she'll be able to make yeah. the full transition to just do this soon but like she's going to lift weights going to pro wrestling pro wrestling practice mm -hmm. and then after that going to an mma practice at at nighttime and then still waking up in the morning and to do what she's got yeah do. and have two kids i mean like like that's these people are, their their lifestyles are see i'm lucky to get to the gym you yeah. know what i mean lift, yeah. lift so weights everything that you guys are doing is tested and and and, and true and proven and proven yeah. so i guess let, let me let me ask you this guys like and i'll kind of give you each the four because you might have a different you know answer to it for someone listening or someone watching that that like what if someone listens to this whole thing what do you want them to take out of this, you know, that they can go and tangibly do to benefit and help their lives? Well, I would say, I mean, obviously what, what we're doing can help people, period, right? Especially, I mean, the stem cells is obviously something that, you know, he touched on what it could do with their peptides really is, is pertains to anybody, whether, uh, I mean, if you have a human body, there's yeah. human body functions going on. Yeah. Peptides optimize your human body functions, mm -hmm. so they're for anybody. I would say the best advice is to stop putting yourself on a back burner and worrying about your career mm. and worrying about your family and worrying about this, that, and the third, when you can't be, you can't provide for your family or do the best at your job or give anybody the best version of yourself if you don't take care of yourself first. So all Health of this is stuff wealth. is really, you know, should be a priority. It's not selfish. You're giving back to the people you love more by being the best version of yourself. 100%. So my best advice is to take advantage of options like these 
you know, stop looking at things as price points or as time from your day to go do them and invest in yourself. I love that. I, I think, honestly, everyone should do blood work every three months, especially as you hit. Like, I'll be 42. I'll be 42 in July, and I get it done. I mean, luckily, it's convenient. I go in the morning, do fasted blood work, get your vitamins checked, get a testosterone checked, your, you know, your growth hormone levels checked uh, every every three to six months. I mean, once you get closer to 40, I would say every three months, you know, younger guys, 20s, 30s, every six months. Yeah. Um, you know, depending, unless you have an issue, then do it. You yeah. Know, more often and then from there you could like i said you sit with someone like my father the doctor and with mike and they can put together a plan for you and then obviously if you're in pain um don't I'm not saying surgeons like i had to have my bicep reattached it's yeah. all the way up here yeah but they use themselves there's a lot of doctors want to cut first a lot of surgeons ask questions later because there's so much money like we said before in medicine being in surgery don't listen to go get a second opinion go see someone listen we're, we'll be honest with you hey listen we could this is going to help your shoulder we think if my dad thinks you need sur shoulder surgery, he's going to send you for the surgery and, yeah. then, and come back to us for stem cells after the fact. You could yeah. do it as an add-on. People get their, their ACL re repaired, they come and get stem cells six to eight weeks later. We don't want you. We don't want to put the surgeons out of business. We just want to work or with them. If it's something them. where it's a it's something that can be fixed without it or it can be helped without it, we want to do it. You yeah. know what I mean? Listen to your body. And like Mike said, stuff isn't cheap, but it's not expensive either. You know, like how many for times what you're gonna get? Out yeah, of it. for yeah, yeah. Like people want to spend people sometimes three hundred dollars. Like people go and spend three hundred dollars at a, a Saturday night in the city. They're spending more. They than spend fifteen hundred dollars on a fucking bag. Exactly, exactly. Like that's what that you and know? that's and I think that's a cultural shift that we need to start to have. Well, and that's like, but that's also starting with individuals like yourselves, where like you're putting out that information, yeah. telling people like this is stuff that is a necessity. I mean, and you can get stem cell injections for for four thousand dollars, even a little bit cheaper, some less expensive sometimes. It's like. If you had do the math, oh, it's a, it's a lot of money. If you do the math on what you spend four thousand dollars on, you know it's you spend on a lot of stupid stuff. Yeah, you know, like you they spend on a lot. They, of, they say time is money. Stem cell procedure is an ultrasound guided injection. You are not in there very long at all. The recovery time is is small. If you go another route, although insurance may cover it or it may not cost as much, time is money, and you're going to be in that office constantly. You're going to be getting procedures. Think about the money you're, you're, you're wasting. So if you're getting paid. You're losing money by being out of by missing work. You're spending money on copays and deductibles going it to see these up. other doctors. You're adding. You're 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 eating probably shit on the road to and from rushing to get to that appointment. Yeah. Start you, doing your own research. Yeah. Don't yeah. just walk in an office and let's say yes to that. What, one yeah. of the biggest things that I love and and simply obviously due to hip can't mention any names. Some like even famous people and their significant others like they're rather than like get their their mother something for Mother's Day where it's something that's not gonna you know they're gonna get them a trip or they're gonna get them a. Uh, a gift certificate to a restaurant or a new bag or a new bag yeah. they're, they're chipping in and getting them procedures done or getting them stuff that's going to help them long term Live like longer, yeah. like i had a, a, a girl and friends who said hey my sister and i want to want to uh chip in and pay for our mother's uh procedure you know she's been talking about it for a while but we know it's one of those things that this until we take her there her. yeah it's going to be better for her and yeah. until we take her there not saying that she wouldn't pay but we're taking her there it's set up just show up you know yeah. you're going to it's going to it's going to help you that's I, the type of thing that we want just people to to know about and, you know? and I love that and that's an amazing message and I, I think what happens though is that people see four thousand dollars but then they don't like they see it maybe at one time where the other four thousand is spread out yeah. amongst different and, like times or months yeah, or weeks about but it still adds up think about up. like even like a hair restoration so now people are using exosomes with PRP to for hair restoration people are paying thousands upon thousands of dollars going to these places where they get plugs put in or or bullshit like that like we have a, uh, we're lucky to work with a company uh prp company uh regen lab and like our, our rep jess is great like we pay i think it's 60 something dollars a, a tube you put that with an exosome you can get the procedure for your hair down to like twelve, fourteen hundred dollars. Wow! Will you be? Will you look like a hair metal? Like you're in a hair metal band? No, but it's yeah. going to start growing your hair back naturally. I mean, we recommend yeah, like three plug, treatments. Yeah. Three treatments yeah. is, is thirty six to thirty eight hundred dollars. You're spending less on those three treatments. Where not only are you coming for three treatments, the doctor is spending about forty five minutes to an hour with you each time. Yeah, doing the procedure for you, and you're not spending thousands upon thousands. You're spending thirty six to thirty eight hundred dollars. Your hair is going to grow back. Who wants to go get these like you know painful hair plugs? I mean, it's not it, it's not like a walk in the park, but it's still little tiny injections in your in yeah. your head. And people people are paying thousands upon thousands of dollars for a lot of for hair plugs and, and other fucking countries, you know, and things. things Again, to, and that goes to that's a good play on kind of how peptides are beneficial. So hair plugs, it's not your hair. No. You know, you do the exosomes and the the PRP, your hair is growing back, which is way different. You know, yeah. so. 
that brings me into the peptides. The beauty of peptides and why it's so amazing is it's your body function that creates the result. So, for example, um, usually when you take a drug or a medication, you take the drug or medication, and then that drug or medication provides a result. If you have a cough and you take cough syrup, the cough goes away, right? Because of the cough syrup. If you don't take the cough syrup, the cough won't go away. Yeah. The medicine made that happen. A peptide, like I said, is a signal. So you're going to inject yourself with, or peptides can be injectable, nose sprays, topicals, sublinguals. Yeah. They could be anything. It depends on the, the peptide you're taking. But what it's going to do is instead of the synthetic drug creating a result, it's going to send a signal to your body function. Your body function is then going to optimize, and then you're going to get a result because your body is functioning better. Yeah. So the result is coming from your body, which is why these pro athletes can utilize this stuff. They get drug tested. They yeah. can't have synthetic things. No. Them, you know, but their body needs – the jig is up, right? So people look at these people on TV like a UFC fighter. Like they got something better than they do. Granted, their exceptional athletic ability, but they're still the fucking human body. Yeah. You can't go for a 12-week fight camp, weight train in the morning, then go to boxing and get punched in the face, then go to jiu-jitsu and get your limbs bent in all different directions, <laughs> then do it again and again and again every without day. Injury. Every day. Without Also, while making weight, malnourishing your body, physically being beat up, ripping your muscle fibers in weight training sessions for 12 weeks, then get in a cage and be in the best shape of your life to fight, it's the human anatomy. Why, why you're sucking 20 pounds to make yeah, weight? It's dope. the human yeah. body. Like, your athleticism means nothing at that point. The human body doesn't do that. No. You know what I mean? Not without proper optimization. You know what I mean? And granted, you're beating your body up every day. The optimization should be going down. Yep. This is where peptides come in. It's going to signal those functions to stay optimized, continue to work, re rehabilitate you, rebuild you, um, you know, make up for all those things that are going to be lacking due to your mental capacity to put in effort it's every day instead of something holding you back from something that you're willing to do. Most people don't even aren't even willing to do no. stuff like that. If you're someone who's willing and wanting to do that. Your body shouldn't be holding you back from it. Yeah, and and these guys are doing this stuff. These guys and girls are doing it into their 40s now. I mean, think about back in the day. You know, people were retiring even like. I mean, listen, I despise to use a guy as a as an example because we're Jets fans. But look yep. at Tom Brady playing till he's 45. You know, he's 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 got proper people around him telling him what to do. These fighters have proper things around him that they're. You look at Dan Henderson. He fought to his 40s at a high level. And you have seen well, guys are coming out of retirement to I mean, fight. You just brought up Jordan Oliver. Yeah, Jordan. he's he's over thirty years old. He's thirty, mm -hmm. thirty-five, almost thirty-five yeah. years old. He's thirty-five. Yeah. He's years making old. the transition to Bellator he's now. He's getting to Bellator now at thirty-five yeah. years old. Yeah. Uh, After already, that. like some people, like obviously, you know, you think reaching the Olympics is the cli is the climax. It's the goal of every kid, most kids, whatever yeah. sport they play, whether it be basketball, wrestling, mm -hmm. swimming, uh, you know, taekwondo. Everyone wants to be an Olympian, right? He yeah. hit that goal, and now he wants to go and do something do, else. Do something else and be the best in his craft. And that's what I'm saying. He has the mental capacity to not give a fuck about his age and know that he has the mental capacity and the push and the drive and the motivation to do more in his life. He needs his body to keep up and his body has the capability, but he puts wear and tear on his body. Yeah, you so do. you need to supplement with something in order to keep up with that. That helps your overall well-being. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're going to tell me somebody who's been an athlete, an Olympic level athlete and an athlete their whole life. Once you start deteriorating and you can't participate or do that to the capacity, your other areas of your life get affected because 100%. you just mentally are fucked at 100%. that point. So it's just, you know, even let's say he didn't want to go to Bellator from being an Olympian, just strictly training. Just in general, yeah. Keep training, you yeah. know what I mean? Like not to compete or anything. Like to take that away from somebody, it deteriorates other parts of your life that you're not even aware of. Yep, I agree. I agree. Yep. And, I, and I think that... I mean, the, people have been looking yeah. for an advantage for the since the beginning of time right in sports i mean now there's legal ways to do it you know like it was making me we're, we're talking i was thinking about a story um you know the guy who who used to own york barbell um i hope i don't butcher the story because i remember hearing a bunch of times i actually looked it up the guy who owned york barbell one of the founders was one of the olympic uh weightlifting coaches in the 1950s right mm -hmm. you know about like olympic weightlifting if you look at like the medal counts back in the day yeah. like one country would come in and fucking sweep the board of medals and then mm -hmm. it'd be a different country how the fuck did this country all, all of a sudden, of a sudden get, yeah. their technique got that much better amount of time so this guy was you know you heard him talk he was it sounded like a meat stick until be into his 90s but he was actually pretty smart he took the russian coach out in the in the 50s they had just won every olympic medal right he was not going to catch up to this Olympics, but he said, hey, when we get out there, they were friends. They would write letters back in the day. You know, I'm sure they didn't have the phones to text. No. Hey, how's it going over there in Russia? How's, uh, no. you know, how's Putin? You know, like, it's like yeah. they, they um, he would freaking, um, 
he would he would uh, how Stalin do I'm saying but uh, yeah. but like they he took the guy when they got to the Olympics he said hey, I want to take you to dinner I, I want to congratulate you for the last Olympics I haven't seen you since yeah. takes the Russian Olympic coach out got him fucking pissed drunk on vodka yeah had the guy write down everything that he, oh we're doing this we're doing this we're taking this this scientist is giving him this this that's how diana ball was, was like, that's how like, diana ball was made yeah and, and then this it's guy the when guy from you yeah name? the usa Abinado. guy comes yeah. back hands it to the doctors and scientists says this is what the russians are taking make it for us yeah. and then usa at the next olympics they won more medals than the russians and yeah. it's you know even in those days they're looking at listen i know of this course. guy has the knowledge I want to know it. He's not going to openly give it to me. Let me go get, you know, yeah. Russians love their vodka. Let me get this guy, you know, tanked and take him out to Look, learn it. Like you, know? you said, people are always looking at a way to enhance and be better. But now there's a way of doing it in a healthy manner rather than just injecting yourself with crap that they don't even know what the fuck's yeah. in it. And it's synthetic and it's all fucked up and you yeah. get all messed up from it. Um, but <laughs> I, I think what you guys are really at the end of the day, the moral of the story is that there are opportunities out there to, excuse me, to do things that don't require the normal normal yeah. route that everyone takes that are actually become more consequent have more consequences than sometimes good and well, I, everybody's looking for that immediate gratification yeah, yeah. and I, but i think also on. though we're we're as human beings like we're um kind of primed to think and do a certain thing so when you guys kind of come out of like what people say left field with like hey you yeah. can do this this and this like you were mentioning before like your friends and family don't believe you right at first but those that don't do but it's going to take time for this message yeah. to get out there and the more that this message is pushed hopefully it becomes mainstream and everyone can live healthier well also hey. what's what's really cool is um so like i said peptides there's 700 different peptides right mm -hmm. yeah. any human body function you can optimize through some sort of peptide treatment people at least when i do consults with them for the peptides it really starts to open up their eyes into how many things play a role into accomplishing your goal for mm -hmm. example people will come in for uh peptides because you know they want to increase their performance maybe something to uh, you know, help them out in the gym with, you know, not getting injured or be a little stronger or look a certain way or gain muscle or burn body fat. And, you know, I do a consult. I find out about their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Are they eating right? Are they working out? You know, how are their current results? Mm -hmm. And the thing is, they're eating right. They're working out hard and they're not getting the results. Mm -hmm. So maybe you don't need something to burn fat and build muscle. How's your fucking focus during your workouts? Yeah. Like, are you doing a set of 10 and like looking around and like, you know, seeing Not what somebody's doing? It. Yeah. Or are you like, when you put down the weights, are you snapping back into reality? Cause you couldn't think of anything else but getting that next rep to full range of motion, to the full extent, to full capacity that which you could do it in. That has nothing to do with being stronger. That's your mental capacity. Let's get you some cognitive peptides to help you focus a little more. Go do everything you're doing for a month and take this and look at your results. It might not be that you need something to help you build muscle and burn fat. Yeah. You might have a weakness in another area. And identifying where you need to be optimized or where necessarily you're not optimized at the moment is what's going to bring you up to that next level. Not just, hey, I want a, more muscles, so let me get something that makes more muscles. Well, why? if you're putting in the work, why are you not getting the muscles? You know, yeah. where, is it your focus? Is it, you know, this, There's that, so that, many that. other things to it. Yeah, so yeah. peptides opens up people's eyes to other things they can do for themselves to get the results that they want as opposed to looking for a quick fix or something to do it for them yeah so let me ask you guys if someone you know someone watches this someone listens to it where can they find you like how can they get in touch with I you mean, guys? Our, our, they can call the office um in new jersey or or, or las vegas depending on where the where they're located area. we could also do phone consults um depending on you know what location and what state they're in uh for you know as far as the regenerative medicine side um you as know, far as the peptides, peptides is nationwide, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. na the peptides are um, literally you'll get me on the phone. Yeah. We'll do a consultation. Uh, again, you know, talk about your lifestyle, what yep. your goals are, try to identify what's best for you, figure out the dosing and the whole protocol. I'll cross reference with our medical director, Dr. Caprio, which is his dad. Mm -hmm. um, once we establish everything that's fully needed for the patient, uh, it gets shipped to our compounding pharmacy. This isn't bottles that are sitting on a shelf somewhere. This is going to be made for the patient. It's yep. going to be specific specs for them. Mm -hmm. So uh, the peptides are as simple as, um, obviously, you can reach us on social media, mm -hmm. at Advanced Development LLC. Mm -hmm. uh, myself is at Showtime Fitness. There's an underscore after show and time. So mm -hmm. show underscore time underscore fitness. Mm -hmm. uh, my number is 862-400-8703. 
Uh, text me is the best thing. We set up a phone console. We'll get on the phone, identify what you need. I cross-reference it with our, our uh, medical director, and then we literally ship it right to you. So it's anywhere anywhere in so the nation. So it's really, it's just, it's straightforward, yeah. streamlined. Yes. Yeah. But that's yeah. that's that's um, that's amazing though, and 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 like I really you know I hope more of this information gets out there. I hope more people learn and want to read and well, listen. Well, thank to you, this man, because this is the yeah, way it's going to get done. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much. No, and like, of course. And, and like on the regenerative medicine side, like we don't want to just it, we just take your money and you don't you don't it doesn't help you. What is that going to do? You're going to tell ten people, hey, these guys are no. taking my money. Did nothing. It did nothing. Yeah. For you. Like, well, at the same time, we'll be honest with you. Like my dad will tell you, listen, you you, you were seeing there was a gentleman the other day who was trying to dish out. Cash that they didn't get treated, but I said I need you to go see this this Person doctor first, for yeah. whatever for whatever reason because I want to make sure this is going to work for you yep. based on the other things you have going on you guys, and, and you your guys body. Do you know, due diligence. well, based I'm, off that too. I mean, obviously, he gave some examples. People have cancer and, yeah. and injuries and things like that, but a big portion, especially for the protocols I create, like in office at the Rutherford office, mm -hmm. um, I help with a wellness protocol. So you know, with a, a vitamin regimen, so mm -hmm. they can get IV vitamin therapies, balance their hormones, look at their workouts, their nutrition, and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, to really help those people, they're not sick. Like, if you're sick or you have something wrong with you and then it feels better, you know the job was done. These people are coming to me really good. Mm -hmm. I have to get them to great. Yeah. So I, it has to work. Yeah. If you're stuck in the same spot, it's not like you're sick and you're still sick and you yeah. can't get better. No, you're already where you're at. You yeah. know what I mean? The only measure or marker is are you better than you were? Yeah. So our job is for this shit to work. Yeah. <laughs> you know like, I mean? If it yeah. doesn't work, you guys don't have a, you're, you're out yeah. of business, right? Yeah. And yeah. I mean, the, the peptides, there's so many places out there, like Mike was saying, you can go online and get something shipped to your house tomorrow. If it can come to your house tomorrow, it's, it's not, not good. good. I mean, there's a good compounding pharmacy is taking 10 to 14 days to fill your orders. You know, it's getting made. On the good end. On a, a good lot end. of them are on the back. Or yeah, really even longer than that end. right now. Just yeah. to, you want to order enough to... To make sure you know you have two I, get, I get calls for consultations and they're asking me dosing for peptides. I'm like, well, did you order peptides with us? Did, did we do a consult? No, I got them online. Hmm. Well, I can't dose that. I have no idea what you have. No, we're taking, we're not, we won't do it either because we won't put it in. But I, re we I tell respect you to take, that. We tell you, uh, d d oh, we'll buy it. From we're not, it's not that we don't want to help you. We don't know what this, we're not going to. Yeah. You guys are looking exactly. to make, yeah, you're yeah, looking like, to make an impact. And yeah, looking like to actually our consultation help distinguishes what you're getting. Yeah. The bottle's going to have the milligrams per milliliter with your name. For you. And every, for you. Same, you same. can show up at a random bottle yeah. that says research purposes only and ask me to dose that out for no. you. That's a lot of responsibility. Same, yeah. Mind, I don't know what the hell's in that. Like yeah. I was our first patient for, for, you know, for the stem cells and for the exosomes. My dad was the second patient for stem cells and exosomes. You know, we were our own first patients for the for the you, you know, guys are a pep, product pep, of yeah we're not gonna the, there's things that like that we could tell you that like a not saying a doctor won't tell you like for example like when i had both my shoulders done with uh, i had exosomes on my left shoulder stem cells on my my right shoulder i knew like sleeping on you know if you're sleeping on your side your shoulder's gonna hurt mm -hmm. and, and it, how much is gonna hurt when you can't take ibuprofen because you don't want to take any NSAIDs yep. for a couple of weeks after the injection so i i said to myself I'm gonna sleep in a recliner. So I slept in a recliner for three days, comfortable recliner. Put on an old show you like to to Let's pass out. So I was put on like Married with Children or yep. Cheers or Miami Vice, one of the classics. You know, yep. we could fall asleep watching two or three episodes and, and just sleeping like like this. You're you're not tossing and turning in the middle middle of the night. Same thing with like if you have your lower back, then you got to prop yourself up. You want to make sure it's a 24 hour process to to recover, and that's that's coming from our experience. That's not yep. the the, the, you know, the doctor obviously tell you no training for a couple yeah, weeks, yeah, not yeah. doing that kind of stuff, but just stuff that we've noticed along the way. Like with your shoulders, I had a friend, MMA guy, uh, black belt, call me up screaming, crying the next day. He slept on the shoulder. Like I never heard this guy cry. Yeah. He's screaming. Like I'm in excruciating. I said, well, did you sleep? Yeah, I slept on my shoulder for uh, for seven and a half hours last night in a, in a row. Oh, deep sleep. I said, well, you had that. deep sleep until you woke up and then you were in deep pain. I said, yeah. you want to, those little things like that, it, it sounds silly almost. Sleeping in a recliner, putting your legs up on so you can't move on your lower back, like like you know, propping them up, putting yeah. your like them certain little things like that based on the procedure. They're going to help you with with recovery, and we'll yeah. gear you in the right direction. And we we could talk to you as a not as a salesman, but as someone who's actually had these things, who's done it, who's and, done it, and that's you know? amazing. And, and I want the audience to know, like that, the moral of the story here is your health is wealth. You got to keep yourself Absolutely. healthy because if you're not healthy, like Mike was saying, is that it's going to affect so <coughs> many other parts of your life that you're not gonna be able to perform for your friends, for your family, for yeah. your business. So if you're listening to this, if you have questions, please, their information will be 
Go ahead. Yeah. Well, one of the things I was going to say is like your knees. Like, so like we touched the base on shoulders. I, luck, knock on wood, I've never had a problem with my knees. Obviously, you still have to walk. You still have to go to work. You still have to take care of your kids. Like, go back to our partner in Las Vegas who had two bad knees. We're just saying, listen, train upper body. Try to limit your walking. I know you're not, you're active. You can still train upper body. Just yeah. sit in a chair more than you used to. Put your legs up more than you used mm-hmm. to. You want to make sure you give yourself, regardless of what the injury is, yep. chance to, to get full full recovery. And when you get back into training, start off with bands. Start off with two and a half, five pound yep. dumbbells, doing some interior, exterior rotator cuff exercises before you start lifting and weights. to be honest, that's, that, that, that stuff's way more important. Like you said, the little things like the band work and yep. the, light, the light dumbbells and things like that. And obviously due to the clientele, that we deal with obviously they're a little eager to get back into their yes, styles of course um but the thing is they do have to do some activity while while they're re- recovering or at least while the stem cells or the whatever exosomes are doing their job because it's regenerative medicine meaning it's regenerating into a brand new body part mm-hmm. meaning it's never been under the daily stresses you're about to put it under yeah so if it's going to rebuild and then all of a sudden you feel great in six weeks and then you jump back into your regimen it's never done that shit before. No. So those little pieces of band work and, you know, those light weights is at least introducing it to a little bit of what it's going to be going through on a daily basis once it does get to that full, you know, capacity of what it's going to be doing. No. I, I, I'm interested in seeing, like, another sport that we've treated. I would say we've treated mostly, you know, uh, obviously MMA wrestlers, a lot of, uh, lot of um, you know, football players, a lot of uh, WWE. As well, WWE guys, a sport that we've treated – some pit, you know pitchers baseball and and I'm just like a lot of these surgeries with baseball are keeping you out for over a year. I mean it's 160 two game season. I'm really interested just as an outsider to see how this regenerative medicine affects baseball. So you're yep. Tommy John surgery. You hear yep. what's the guy Dr. James Andrews? You're getting time, you know you're out for for a year plus. You have pitcher. Your favorite pitcher gets hurt. You you're know done. and then they're, you're out and then you're you know you're miserable as a fan for you. I want to see years down the line because baseball is so tough with all all this yeah, stuff even it seems like they're tougher with than any other sport yeah. i want to see how much this stuff helps baseball players down the it, line. it's going to be very you know? interesting to see how everything that you guys are you talked about today this guy's throwing 101 miles an hour they're going to get the same thing that mike said they're going to get it's not one year yeah. arms gonna hurt. When, when is it going to get <laughs> yes you know, exactly. when's, when's guys are bigger well, and stronger that, than ever you, know? you look at baseball you know a lot of a lot of sports like wrestling Mm-hmm. You need to be able to do every single thing from every angle. You don't know where you're going to be when you have to do that move. It's got to be trained everywhere. Yeah, you're throwing with the same arm every day. Yeah, in baseball, you're swinging from the, the same, same left position. or right side yep. every day. Yeah. So there's going to be compensation going on. Your Eventually. body, one side is going to be, you know. And the thing is, you're training and you're you're throwing the ball with your right hand all these years. Once your right arm gives out from all that wear and tear, your left arm doesn't know how to do that shit. No. You can't do it anymore. No, no. You can't play. You got to keep that no. that side right. healthy. Yeah. Yeah. You're right, and, and and like I was saying, like you guys are putting out a message that is extremely important, and it is going to be very interesting to see how baseball eventually, because you know injuries take away, because if certain players get hurt, yeah. f- f- tickets don't sell, because at the yeah. end of the day they're a business. Well, there's so many games too. Like, who wants to go to a game and see a, a team play a last place team when your stars aren't playing? Exactly. You know it what I mean? Doesn't make sense. Or you- like, who wants to go see? Like, I remember, like I like, you know, like I'm a Yankee fan. Okay, great, but I, yeah. I'm not one of those. The only team I hate in the New York area is the Rangers. I'll admit to it. I'm mm-hmm. a big Devils fan. Grew up with dealing uh-huh. with Rangers fans bullshit. I, I like the Mets. I like cheering for the Mets. Mm-hmm. And seeing like a couple of years, they've had bad luck with pitchers. I mean, they had the best pitching staff for for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. And two of those guys get hurt. You go from They're World done. Series favorite to done. to third to third in the division. I mean, other guys I like. You know, like Ken Griffey Jr. He never got hurt. He freaking ran into the wall. Like how much stems? I just think how much stems is going to quick. He caught. He hit what six hundred eighty home runs. He probably would have broken the record if he never got hurt. Got hurt. You know, yeah. certain things like that. I'm interested in seeing how it affects. Baseball is such a numbers, numbers game. Yeah. Where you know, like look at Aaron Judge now. Like he's he he broke Roger Maris's you know rec- Yankee record, AL record, um, last year. Like if you can keep a guy like that healthy, what are the well, like I mean, you skies, said, man, there's so sky's much, the limit? There's so many games in a baseball season that if you're out just for a little bit, that's so much missed opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Think about like another pitcher I liked growing up. Uh, I mean, never grew up. I was in college, post college. Dontrell Willis on the Marlins Ke- kept getting hurt. He had a herky jerky motion. A bigger dude. Yeah. You know, he made up his motion. I-, I remember hearing the story is he gave up a ton of hits to his friends in the game. So he went out uh, behind and threw the ball against the wall with a motion no one's ever seen before. To and said no one's going to get a hit off me. And then that motion obviously caused him to have. Of like, like a guy like that. What is he? What would his career have been 
having regenerative medicine. Exactly. You know, or got even the guy, even if you want to go back a generation before that, Mark the Bird Fitterich. Everyone, he was a rookie of the year. I, I think he won a Cy Young in the mid 70s. Mm -hmm. I obviously it was a little before my time. I don't remember, but like, guy pitched for three or four years, was an absolute phenom. Yeah. We forget about guys like that. Like, what would his career have been if he had this, had this, stuff. Had this stuff back in, the, in those days? Well, like, like we were saying, as this information gets out there and hopefully it gets picked up and people want to utilize it. And like I was saying, like, like if you're watching or listening to this, their information is going to be in the description. They'll have their social media handles, we, their names, website, all that stuff. If you have questions, reach out to these guys, set up a consultation and get yourself on track to recovery or just like Mike was saying, from good to great. And any final words that you guys have for, for the audience? I mean, just listen, you know, start taking step, steps towards not just pinpointing the things that you want to be better, but the things that need to be better and overall for overall growth of yourself as a human being. And, you know, there's stuff out there that can help that. And it could really I hate using the word anti-aging because mm -hmm. people feel I think yeah. people feel like it's for an older community. Mm -hmm. But the whole point is anti-aging. Aging is dying. Yeah. Like <laughs> when you're zero years old. You know, as soon as you get to one years old, you're one year closer to dying. Yeah. So you want crazy. an anti age. You and know pay what I mean? taxes too. Yeah. yeah. Pay taxes too. Yeah. Well, there's ways to get around that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but um but yeah, also we're gonna be at the golf outing yes, that you, you guys will. are doing. Yep. So um I know I'm assuming that people that are at that golf outing probably listen to this podcast too. Um so you know we're we're gonna be there, we're gonna have a table set up uh for all the all the pro golfers that'll be there, but also uh, during cocktail hour that night, we'll, we'll be there giving out information. So if any of yep. you um, are listening, I'm not, I don't even know if this is going to air before that, but uh, if it happens to air before that, you know, come stop by, see us. Yeah. Give you information. 100%. Obviously, if you're in the New Jersey or Las Vegas areas, please reach out to us. Even if you're not, we could steer you in the right right, di right direction, both on the peptide sides or maybe working with someone in one of the other states that we work with. We have connections all around, around the country and world uh, with this stuff. And just make sure you get your blood work done. Yeah. You know, it's better to find something early than to find it late get your heart checked every six months um get a venous doppler done on your legs every six months mm -hmm. just take take care of yourselves take care of your bodies and also and blood, work is, blood work is just a cool um metric to see <coughs> what the little things do to help you for example yep. you get your blood work done and you don't change a fucking thing you just drink a gallon of water a day for the next month and then you do your blood work again shit's gonna come back better yeah I, now I, all you yeah. do is drink water. Yeah. Now imagine if water you implemented the three <laughs> things that I tell you to do, yeah. or four things that we yeah. tell you to do. You know, what I mean, it, it, it gives them a little hope. Like they, you know, you drink down water every day. You're just gonna be like, I'm pissing like crazy. This is annoying. But then you look at your blood work and you're like, Whoa. Yeah. Like, I got better from that. Yeah. You know, and it just shows that consistency Get rid of the with toxins the right in your thing. body. Yeah. Yeah. The consistency of the right things has a compound effect that will build up. So you know, blood work's just cool as a, also an assessment to see if the things you are doing. Are working yeah well i want to thank you guys so much for coming on today i learned a shit ton you know honestly i i'm now i'm really interested in just like You're coming to get your blood work done this yeah I, I should get, come I, hydrated fasted yeah i got i definitely i haven't got my blood work done in like a year so i definitely have to get it done um but like i was saying their information is going to be in the description once again guys thank you so much for coming thank you. thank you so much for being on here i hope that just you know i i live by that if we impacted one person from this episode we did something right and Absolutely. remember guys Always, why not you?